Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Andon Star AD407 microscope. This is apparently an all-in-one microscope. It's recommended by a good friend of mine, Jason, from Jason's Electronics Repair. And Andon Star got in touch and basically asked me if they could send me over a review unit for free. So this is a sponsored video, of course. Uh, I didn't pay, with, pay for this with my own money. Um, and they sent me one on next day delivery. So I told them I'd unbox it and do a little review on it. And in return, I get to keep it. So I'm going to give this to my son afterwards so as he can play and start to get into this kind of work. But I'm going to do an unboxing and give it an honest review. Uh, some of you may know that the reviews that I do, if any, or if I recommend a product, is because I genuinely believe in it. So... I'm obviously not going to give any opinions until I've tried it for myself. I have, obviously, like I said, Jason from Jason's Electronics Repair, linked down in the video description to his channel. But he does have one of these, and he started with one of these, and he said it's a really good product. So that's why I agreed to take on this particular unboxing. Obviously, this is not an unboxing channel. I focus mainly on repairs, and what I'm used to is the Amscope um stereo microscope which i use a camera as a microscope as a as an eyepiece attachment so basically i use a, a normal microscope camera with a eyepiece converter and i just pop that into my eyepiece so it's going to be interesting to see what this is going to be like uh, it does have a built-in screen it also has uh, as far as i'm aware hdmi output so yeah, that's pretty much it. So like I said, this is a sponsored video. I'm not being paid financially for this, but I do get to keep the product once I'm finished with it. If this is any good, then I'll leave a link down in the video description. Um, and I believe these cost £249.99 in British pounds. I'm not sure how much that converts to in US dollars. I'll put that down in the um in the in the video and uh, do the conversions on that but 249 pound 99 apparently it is 1080p 60 frames per second as far as i know uh so yeah it, it's probably going to be a pretty good a pretty good little piece of kit especially as a starter kit i mean obviously stuff like the amscope and things like that is very expensive it doesn't come with a camera it doesn't come with anything else um, it just comes with the microscope and the eyepieces. You have to buy several attachments for it. So this is probably aimed more at the beginner, I would say. Um, although I have seen some professionals using this as well on videos. Uh, so you know, I might be I might be surprised. It might be a good product. But on the front of the box, we've got obviously the um, the barcode with what's on there. Uh, and it says AD uh, and on star AD four zero seven seven inch HD um, pair. Uh, there's a couple of uh, trailing dots there, and then it says pair and SMD slash SMT soldering. And when and on star got in touch, they did say that they was focused on the tech repair industry. So uh, hopefully they are. Uh, hopefully they're a really good, really good company, and hopefully that you know. We might work together in the future, depending on how this goes. So, I have opened this up already, just to check the contents. Um, I haven't actually took it out or anything, I've just opened it up. Had a quick scan through the box and stuff, but it doesn't come with any kind of seals on it, from what I can tell. Um, as far as I know, this has come directly from Amazon, because it was Amazon who delivered it. So, what I assume they've done, instead of just randomly picking one of the best picks, uh, which a lot of companies would do, They've actually gone to Amazon and ordered one of these directly to my house. So obviously I provided my address and then this morning this showed up. So uh, yeah, I was quite surprised to get it so quick. I was kind of expecting them to send it directly from China and kind of hand pick, cherry pick one of the best um, the best review units. But no, it's retail packaging. It comes straight from Amazon where they ship all of their uh, microscopes and stuff too. Um, so yeah, this is going to be obviously an actual technician's perspective. I'm not going to give any kind of false opinions. Um, like I said, anyone that knows me, anyone that knows um, my agenda when it comes to repair and stuff, my opinion cannot be bought. If I like a product, I'll, be, I'll recommend it. I'm not exactly what you would call the typical influencer. I mean, the channel's not huge or anything. But if I don't like a product, I am not going to put my neck on the line and recommend it. And I will give a 100% honest review. But that being said, 
let's get this thing unboxed, shall we? So, no wizardry. I'm not going to uh, do any kind of fancy editing on this one. Uh, it's just going to be a straight up, you know, getting ri getting rid of a few silences and dead spaces in the video, but that's about it. Uh, so, right out of the box, we've got the we've got the manual. Um, I'm a technician. We don't read manuals. Come on, guys. We don't we don't do it. We don't read the manuals. We like to we like to wing it. So that can go there for now. Uh, very tightly packaged. Uh, so we've got a little remote here, which is cool. Uh, looks like he's got some different uh, functions, zoom functions, functions for brightness and stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We have a cable of some sort. Is this kind of a, another handheld remote thing? Um, yep, looks like it pro probably is. That goes to... Uh, various different outputs actually there's a micro usb there's a usb type a and a dc jack as well interesting so i'm assuming that just spurs off to everything you need to spare it off to i'm not sure if this has usb output this is quite nice i've included a hdmi port a uh, hdmi cable in the box uh, now i bought a gopro a couple of days ago and uh, I ended up sending it back, and one of the annoying things was there was no micro HDMI port in there, no micro HDMI cable in the box, which was really annoying. So yeah, it's quite nice that they've included that cable there. That's pretty awesome. So not too long, I'd say what two two meters, three meters maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's really nice that they've included that cable in there. Alright, we've got the stand. Solid aluminium stand, aluminium, however you want to pronounce it, by the look of it. Not too heavy, I'm honestly not keen on that. Um, I would probably like a heavier stand. I mean, the when we compare it to the Amscope, the Amscope weighs 18 kilograms. Um... You know, it's really, really heavy. It's not going nowhere. And I'm sorry about that background noise there. Something just decided to go off on my uh, on my computer. Never mind. Okay, we've got the actual unit itself. Cool. So this is the LCD and the camera or microscope section built into one. Okay. Uh, doesn't look like this is detachable, which is, uh, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but, you know. Okay. Right. What else have we got? I nearly put, I nearly put that, uh, I nearly put that straight on the LCD. We've got, a, we've got a plug socket, a USB AC DC adapter. Uh, input 100 to 244 uh, input 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, 0.4 amps, and output is 5 volt, 2 amps, 10 watts. Okay, so not very high powered for a microscope, considering the LCD is built into the unit as well. We've got some screws and a little Allen key. While we're using the Allen key, I'll use my own off the uh, the normal screwdriver set. Oh, okay, we do have a base. Cool. Right, so we've got a base with some LEDs on. Uh, yeah, that is an LED. So we have got we have got a bit of a, a weight to it. Not too heavy, I'll be honest. Um, I'd say about 300 grams, 400 grams. So again, I'd like it to be a bit heavier. Um, but the fact that it comes with the lights as well, that's, that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it for the box. There's nothing else in there apart from packaging. So let's see how easy this is to set up and then I'll go over the technical specs afterwards. So I'm not going to read the manual, like I said, I will have a look at the manual just to have a look at the technical specs in a minute, but I don't want to look at the manual before I've tried to set it up myself. So just to see how easy it is to actually set up without, um, you know, without actually reading any instructions. And... Okay, so I'm assuming I'm assuming that this goes here. Oh, that's a bit a bit loose. Can you tighten that? I would sure hope so. 
I'll figure it out in a minute. Right, I'm going to need some screws. So let's just tip them out. Okay, and I'm going to turn that on its side. Let's see if we can figure out which of these go in here. Okay, well they fit these tiny little Allen key bolt things. Interesting. And how about these Phillips bits? Nope, they don't. So okay, so these Allen bolts are going to go inside these holes here. Uh, right, let me get a Allen key bit to fit. I'm not going to use that flimsy tool. I don't like them, uh, them tools that come with the items. Uh, that one will do nicely. So, what size is this? It's a size 3 uh, hex bit. Allen bit. I don't know what you want to call it. Would I like to see these magnetic? Unfortunately, they don't appear to be. Fairly straightforward so far. I'm assuming these Phillips screws would go in there somewhere. But what for? Hmm, interesting. So that would go in there, I assume. So you could get your own arm for this, I would I would assume. I think um, Jason has his own arm, which he made. Uh, they would go like that. Um, what is this for? Right, let me see if I can figure that out. I'm not sure what these screws are for, to be honest. Not sure what's meant to go there because all that's left are these springy things. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Okay, we'll read the instructions because I can't can't seem to work out what goes there. Um Right, so yeah, I'm not sure what the for. It's not included in the manual there. Okay, well, I'm going to ignore them then because that's not in the manual. So I'm assuming that would be for some optional attachment. Maybe someone in the in the comment section will know. But I'm I'm going to ignore them. I just, I mean, I assume these things go here, right? Those things go there somewhere and do something, but I don't know what. I honestly don't know what. I couldn't tell you. Uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of these small bases. It might be handy to use for for, for uh, you know like phone boards and stuff. But I mean, this doesn't even come with a. It comes with an Allen key, but it doesn't come with a Phillips screwdriver. But that said, I mean, if you're a technician, you probably got a Phillips screwdriver anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm really not sure what they're for. 
Maybe someone knows. It's uh, just some little little spring things. Weird. All right. Well, let's take a look then. So we've got the cable here. So that's the HDMI cable. I'll have a look at that in a minute. This is the cable which I assume is for power and um, the LEDs, maybe? Hmm. Okay, so where does the power cable go? Yeah, again, I can't see a power cable. Um, I mean, obviously, this goes inside there, but I'm not going to be using that. I'll probably power this off the computer. Um, I don't know if... Actually, I've got a quick charge port. So I've, got a quick, I've got a quick charge port on my computer. Not on the computer itself, but on uh, an external dock. And that will provide me 5 volts at 2 amps. So, that should be more than enough to turn this on. Ah, there we go. That's turned on then. So, let's do the peel. There we go. Right, so where does this go? Let's read the instructions again. It's got to be for the camera, right? But I can't see where it would go. That's the odd thing. So let's have a look. I'll see what's in the manual. I don't like using these. Oh, it's to pair with the spotlights. Ah, right, okay, so you can't see at all without those lights. Right, so you can see on the screen there that it is picking up an image there, but without those lights, there it is. So without those lights, you're not powering nothing. You're not seeing nothing. All right, well, I mean, that's pretty obvious. You need the lights. Hmm. Okay, right, so let's find something to pop under the scope then. This, uh, no, let's find something with a bit more detail, shall we? A Nintendo Switch motherboard. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to need to obviously get this set up. Whoopsie. Okay. Right, now I've got focus. There we go. Oh wow, that's got a pretty good zoom level. Okay. That is a very clear image. That is a very clear image. I am pleasantly surprised. That is a very, very clear image. So if you take a look, you can see a fair bit of detail there. I'm not I'm not just saying that, but there's a lot of detail in that picture. Okay, so how would I zoom then? 
Because I think it's got digital zoom as well. If I remember what I've been told by other people, it's got digital zoom. Let's just see if you guys can see that. Well, that's a very clear image. I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised. That would definitely come in handy. Okay, so it's got a it's got a capture button by the look of it. I'm assuming if I put an SD card in, I can just snap a picture. I am pleasantly surprised at that. Let me um, let me scoot over a little bit, and uh, and you guys can see as well. So it's a little bit tricky for me. Okay, so let's have a look. Oh, okay, so no batteries. That's a bit um that's a bit of a shame. Could have included some batteries, I suppose. Uh, I do have a remote with some triple A's in it though. So two triple A batteries are required. Uh, that's the wrong back. Whoops. That's my bad. There we go. Menu. Okay. So it's kind of like um, it's kind of like your standard menu resolution. Let's go through that. Uh, UHD P twenty four. QHD P thirty. Has this got four K? No. I'm not seeing any difference in the resolution there. Oh, no, I am. Resolution HD 30. No, I'm not seeing any difference in that resolution there. So, is that for the HDMI? Uh, exposure so we can turn we can change the exposure yep like that whoops okay so if we set the exposure to plus two slash three whatever that means that seems about right uh, I've got a contrast, high contrast, low contrast, ooh, that's a bit dark, medium, medium seems good, mm, black and white, I'm not keen on, I'm not sure why you put a black and white colour there, or a negative, uh, I'd say stick with normal. Alright, okay, well that's very straightforward to set up, very straightforward indeed to set up, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so let's try and connect it to HDMI then, shall we? Let's see how simple and straightforward this is. So we've got a normal HDMI lead there, and a mini HDMI lead there. Honestly, not keen on that being on the top neither. That should be on the back, really. Okay. And I'm going to set this to... I'm going to connect this up to my capture card. So, I'm going to remove everything else from my capture card and just set it up on its own so I'm not going to plug in any kind of uh, HDCP removal or anything like that which I usually use okay and the screen went off but it has come back on that's very clear 
That's very, very clear indeed. I could actually see myself using that on a regular basis for smaller projects. You know, if I don't want to use this thing, uh, or if I've got to travel around, it's very portable, it's quite light. So looking at the capture card then, if I just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm recording in 4K right now. And the maximum this is outputting is 1080p. So 1080p is the maximum output. Uh, I'm not I'm not keen on the on-screen display, so with the record time and stuff, there's got to be a way to remove that. You know, for the left-hand corner, I'm not keen on that. If I'm going to be streaming with it, that's not that's not a good look. But the problem is, if you was to move it, So if you were to stretch the image a little bit, you could, you're creating a little bit of a dead spot. So basically now, the chip is directly in line with the LCD, but you're losing a lot of that because I've got rid of the, um, the clock on the top. There might be a way to remove it, I'm not 100% sure, but um, yeah, I'm not keen on that. Uh, but yeah, that's upscaled, to, that's upscaled to 4K. I'm hoping that's going to come across okay. But that, honestly, I am genuinely, genuinely surprised at that. I am genuinely surprised. Uh, and let's see if we've got any more. Let's see if we've got, let's see what the zoom looks like, actually. Let me switch back over. And does it remain in focus when I do zoom? So let me try and find something that we might want to zoom in on. Uh... Yeah, so if we wanted to, for example, check this connector. Uh, oh no, is this connector damaged? Mm, the remote's not extremely responsive. That's the maximum zoom we've got. Honestly, that's really clear. Even zoomed in. Even digitally zoomed in, that's very, very clear. Uh, we can adjust the brightness from the... From the cat from the remote as well that's cool well like I said the the infrared of the remote is not extremely responsive uh, I said bright brightness then I meant exposure sorry about that um, oh we can change it from um, NTL and pal I'm pretty sure that's meant to be NTFS I mean that doesn't make a difference I mean we're on a capture card so that's not going to make a difference uh, I honestly can't see many people wanting to use this on a big screen. It's very easy to focus. Because the focus is right in front of you. So that's going out of focus now. And just like, bam, there. Done. Yeah, I am honestly surprised about this. I am honestly surprised. Uh, so let's do some real world testing then. So I'm going to do a real world test. So let me say, for example... I want to change M92 T36, which I do all the time. It's a very, a very common occurrence for me. So I'm just going to try and zoom out. Okay. So very common occurrence for me would be to replace M92 T36. This is a, a power management chip for the Nintendo Switch. So let's say, for example, I want to remove this. Okay, so M92 would be removed right there. So not too bad in terms of removing the chip, but how about putting it back? So I think what I would have to do is weigh the board down because it's on a shiny surface. And also I would have to move these lights out of the way a little bit because they are in the way. So I'm going to adjust the lights. Although, moving those lights around into um, pretty much a completely different spot hasn't affected the image quality at all. And you can see me moving the lights around there. That would work, I think. So let's 
try and put this chip back on then. As if I was replacing it. Obviously I'm not putting a new chip on here, but... Okay, the one thing I do like is the fact that I can kind of see the sides of the chip to help with alignment. Now, my motor memory, my muscle memory, would have to get used to the fact that I'm not looking inside an optical scope. But that's because I'm used to looking inside an optical scope. I'm not used to looking at a screen. And to be honest, I find it quite difficult. But, I mean, if you're, if you're new or you've had... A, um, you know a digital microscope before then you'd be absolutely fine personally I find it difficult to do but I would probably get used to it eventually it may take a little while to get used to but I would get used to it eventually I assume so I would add some flux here and again I tried to look into the optics There we go. And then I would press and hold and reflow it. Cool. Well, I've just soldered a chip without using an optical microscope. I mean, personally, I can do these without a scope, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, Definitely something I could get used to if needed. Definitely something I could get used to. So let's just try and touch up these joints, which is what I would do. So because there's a little bit of a bad joint here, I would attempt to touch that one joint up. Yeah, that works. That's pretty cool. I am very impressed, I must say. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm pretty, I'm pretty surprised. I really am. I'll be honest. Um, I didn't expect it to be that clear. Obviously, when I've seen other people use it, it's been like this, where they've been like, you know, had a camera in front of them, and you know, you can just see the screen, and it's a little bit grainy, a little bit distorted because of YouTube compression and stuff like that, but. Honestly, when I'm looking at one in person, I would say it is definitely, definitely worth the money and worth the investment to get. Uh, a microscope is one of the most crucial parts of a technician's tool bag. Um, and the fact that I could, you know, literally just lift this up, unscrew a couple of, um, a couple of bolts and put it into a bag. Uh, you know, if my sister phoned me up, damn it, I've dropped my phone in water, can you bring your soldering iron? You know, you could, have, you could have, for example, the TS-100 soldering iron. You could have a, a little mini hot air station and um, and this little thing in a little bag with some screwdrivers and a fix-it kit, for example. Um, and you've got yourself a portable setup. That is very light. I mean, it weighs next to nothing. I can lift that up. I mean, I don't want to break it, obviously, but I can lift that up with two fingers. Um, let me just see if there's any technical specs technical specs if not then i'll include them on the um i'll include them on the video um very easy to put together very easy to use and actually get set up uh okay so here's the technical specs basic parameters we have a four megapixels high definition sensor um we have uhd 2880 by 2160 24 fps is the maximum ref, um, resolution okay so let me try and change that in obs and see if it actually recognizes it okay so we want uh right, so i'm going to set it to match output fps uh, so frames per second and we've got 2880 by 2160 so i've got to type that in manually and uh, no it does not show up so as you can see there's a black screen right now yeah there's a black screen so i'm assuming 2880 by 2160 is on this screen and that it just outputs at 19 20 uh, 1080 uh, one way i can verify that is if i switch to my desktop here and i go to my camera app 
And, hmm, OBS. Uh, my camera app seems to be crashing. Okay, there we go. So it's actually picked up now in my camera app. So basically, because I'm using the Elgato CamLink 4K, it does register as a camera. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got it, I've got this on my desktop now using the normal Windows camera app, which is an option. You can do that. So you could hook it up to a computer. Let's go to settings and yep, 1080p, 16 by 9, uh, so 1920, 1080 at 30 fps, which is absolutely fine for this kind of work. So obviously, if you're if you're working off a bigger screen or a computer, 1080p at 30 fps, not a problem. Not a problem. You do not need 60 fps for this kind of work. And in fact, I would recommend running it if you can at 24 fps. Uh, the same with any camera, any motion, um, apart from gameplay, um, I would recommend 24 FPS for video. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely fine, 10, uh, 1080p at 30 FPS. No issue with that at all. Uh, magnification ratio up to 270 times. Uh, on a 27-inch monitor, that says. Photo resolution, max 4032 by 3024, 12 megapixel. Uh, photo format is JPEG. Uh, minimum focus distance is five centimeters, so that's fairly low. Look, you can have that fairly low to the uh, to the base there. I mean, you've got enough working distance there to work with, more than enough. Uh, five volt DC, and as you see, it's running off my PC on uh, an external um, USB hub with a uh, power only input, uh, power only output. Sorry. Uh, screen size is 7 inch, stand size is 20 centimeters by 12 centimeters by 19 centimeters, which is fairly small. It's nice and compact, you can, you know, you can put it away and stuff. And one thing I do like is the fact that there is actually a bolt on the bottom here. Um, let me just try and turn this around and show you. So if you've got a, you know, a wrench nearby, if you've got a, just a wrench sitting around, um, you know, you can actually lower this and flatten it down. Uh, yeah. And basically just lie it down when it's not in use, which is really, really good. It's very compact. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it weighs, it says it weighs 1 kg, which is absolutely perfect. Uh, it says it can be cleaned. The microscope lens can be cleaned with a damp cloth. Uh, the display on the device is very fragile. That's pretty obvious. Uh, not intended for field use. It's not waterproof and should not be exposed to extreme temperatures perfectly obvious um do not allow unsupervised access yeah okay uh safe and low maintenance as long as common sense is employed well at least they're honest i mean uh a little bit of common sense and i managed to get this set up without the instructions technically because i mean the things that i was unsure about are not even in the instructions so um yeah honestly i would absolutely recommend this product um I'm not just saying that because they've sent it me for free. I'm under no obligation, no contractual obligation to say anything that they may like or dislike. But this, for me, probably gets around about an 8 out of 10 in terms of practicality um, compared to value for money. £250 to get started in this game. Uh, obviously, this is a very expensive game and £250 is a very reasonable price for the product that you're getting. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I'll leave a link down in the video description to this. Um, if you have any comments or questions, I'll do my best to help. And I'm sure Jason, one of my moderators from Jason's Electronics Repair, will be more than happy to answer some of the more technical questions, considering the fact that he's um, had one of these for a while. Um, but yeah, absolutely uh, highly recommended um, for anyone who's looking for a very practical, very cheap microscope. Uh, thank you all for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.